Hey admins, welcome back to this month's edition of What's New for G Suite Admins. Ryan here, and I'm excited to share with you the feature updates from the month of June. Let's get started. Here's the headline news from June. We're making AppMaker generally available to help you rethink how your teams operate. AppMaker is G Suite's low-code application development environment that makes it easy for teams to build custom apps to speed up workflows and improve processes. We've made changes and added new features, including built-in support for Cloud SQL, so that AppMaker is even better for our customers, offers high performance, scalability, and convenience for IT developers who can design and build apps even faster, easier ways to connect with data, and services you need, using app scripts to access more than 40 Google services, Google Cloud Platform, and other third-party services. You'll have visibility into the apps running in your organization, including ownership, usage metrics, and OAuth permissions. For more information on the management capabilities available, visit the Help Center. And now let's take a look at our admin updates. Jamboard is designed to make learning a more interactive and engaging experience through real-time peer-to-peer collaboration. To help make this technology more accessible, we're offering discounted Jamboard pricing for G Suite for Education domains. G Suite for Education customers who have already purchased Jamboards will qualify for a one-time management and support fee, which also covers a wall mount, two styluses, and an eraser. While all devices come with a free one-year warranty, our partner BenQ is offering an optional three-year warranty at a discounted rate. For information on purchasing a Jamboard at this newly discounted pricing, see the reference guide attached in the presentation notes. In addition to an ever-growing list of countries that have Jamboard available for purchase, G Suite customers in Australia and New Zealand can now purchase Jamboard and access using their G Suite license. Visit our website to learn more. We're introducing a new report in the admin console that shows worldwide availability for G Suite services in previous months. The new G Suite Apps Monthly Uptime Report adds to the information on G Suite's current status and future availability in the G Suite Apps Status Dashboard. These reports can help you better understand the historic and current availability of products for your users. To view the report in the admin console, go to Reports, and then select G Suite Apps Monthly Uptime. Check out our Help Center to learn more. We're giving you more visibility into the computers being used to access your corporate data and apps through a new feature called Endpoint Verification. This feature collects information via Chrome extensions and native apps on a user's devices and displays that information in a new report. With endpoint verification, you'll be able to see in the admin console an inventory of desktop and laptop devices within the enterprise that access corporate data and device information including screen lock, disk encryption, and OS version. To see the report in the admin console, Go to Device Management, Endpoint Verification. Endpoint Verification is available for Chrome OS, Mac OS, and Windows devices and requires a Chrome extension. When the Endpoint Verification extension is installed on a user's device, a notification is shown to users. The user must click Agree before data from their device is shown in the admin's Endpoint Verification report. If the user does not click Agree, information about that device is not shown. Check out our Help Center to learn more. We recently introduced an early adopter program for the new Gmail and want to provide some additional details about the rollout schedule. After the new Gmail has the general availability launch in July 2018, you'll have the following options in the admin console. Immediately transition your users to the new Gmail allow your users to opt into the new Gmail at the time of their choice, or your users wait until they are allowed to opt into the new Gmail. Users who haven't yet been transitioned to the new Gmail will be automatically migrated to the new experience approximately eight weeks after the GA announcement, with the option to opt out of the new Gmail for an additional four weeks. Approximately 12 weeks after the GA announcement in July, users who've opted out of the new Gmail will be automatically migrated to the new experience. Check out the Help Center for more info on the new Gmail transition plan in July. We're launching some changes to the Gmail routing settings in the admin console. Sending, receiving, 
catch-all address, and domain-level routing settings will now be read-only. These legacy settings are still active, but in order to make changes, you need to click the Convert button next to the existing rule. Once you click Convert, all of your rules will be manageable from one unified routing section. We'll automatically convert the setting and map it to the new fields. And the old setting will no longer be visible in the user interface, so you won't have to clean up old rules afterwards. If you don't convert your settings using the Convert button, they'll be automatically migrated to the unified routing section no earlier than July 11th, 2018. This migration will take place over the course of several weeks. There are now new features in Hangouts Meet to ensure that your users always have their meeting rooms configured correctly and ready for upcoming meetings. As an admin, you can now set a preferred mic, speaker, and camera to use for all meeting rooms. If you're using Hangouts Meet qualified peripherals, the devices will automatically reset to the recommended configuration for microphone, speaker, and camera between uses. If you're using other peripherals or custom configurations, an alternative default configuration can also be set from the admin console. To learn more, check out our Help Center. Earlier this month, we announced interoperability with SIP H.323 standards, based video conferencing systems, and Skype for Business in Hangouts Meet through the PECSIP Infinity platform. You can enable this feature in the admin console by clicking Apps, G Suite, Google Hangouts, and checking the box for Turn on Interoperability with Other Systems under Meet Settings. After the feature is enabled and a token is generated, you'll need a license from PECSIP for the solution to work. For more information, visit the Help Center. We're introducing new features in Google Vault that allow for more granular retention and provide a more transparent search experience. These features can help you retain the exact data you need, thus reducing your liability risk as well as improving your e-discovery process. Previously, Hangouts Meet recordings were subject to applicable drive retention rules. With this launch, you can set default and custom retention rules specifically for Hangouts Meet. This will allow you to set a shorter retention period for Meet recordings if, for example, they happen to contain more sensitive content. As a G Suite admin, you can now set custom retention rules specifically for drive files that have been moved to a user's trash. This option provides more flexibility for organizations who want to control the lifecycle of files deleted by users separately from those files still active in their users' My Drive and Team Drives. We're making the process of searching your entire domain and large OUs easier and more transparent. If a data type supports domain-wide search, you can now select All Accounts to search the entire domain. As Vault processes your large search request, you'll see an activity indicator and the amount of time that has elapsed. You have the option to cancel your search or run another search in a new tab. When your search is complete, you'll now see the total time taken for the search. For a Gmail search, you'll see the total number of accounts searched and the number of accounts searched per second. Lastly, we're also making it easier for organizations to export large amounts of Hangouts chat data. Going forward, export data from Hangouts chat will be condensed into a small number of files. Previously, you'd see one conversation per file. Now, you'll see multiple conversations included in the same file until the file size limit is reached. To learn more, see the Help Center. Many organizations use Google Groups to connect and collaborate in the workplace. But as with any communication tool, it's important that your settings deliver the right balance between sharing and security. To help prevent data from accidentally being shared, by default, Google Groups sharing settings are set to best protect privacy. No one outside your domain can view or search groups in your domain. No one outside of your domain can post to your groups. No one outside your domain can become a group member. And finally, only those within your domain can create groups. You can adjust each of these default settings individually by reviewing and updating the sharing permissions for your domains in the admin console. Earlier this year, we introduced an all new version of tasks where you can keep track of your daily tasks, organize multiple lists, and track important deadlines with mobile and web applications. Tasks is now available as a standalone G Suite core service 
and will launch on by default, but can be turned off at any time in the admin console under Apps, G Suite. As a G Suite core service, tasks will be covered under your existing G Suite agreement and will offer the same technical support and service level commitments as any other core service. Well, that's it for June's updates. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and save the playlists. You can also check out our G Suite release calendar and What's New newsletter to stay informed. And follow the links in the video description to learn more about these updates. This has been Ryan with the What's New for G Suite Admins, June edition. Thanks for watching.